So now I'm gonna talk about grip. Grip does kind of relate to the stance you're in, okay? If you're running more of a traditional weaver stance, then you're gonna prefer a weaver grip, okay? Now, if you look at where my hands are on this revolver right here, okay? Typically, what we're looking at with that technique that we talked about earlier, we said we're doing a push and a pull. So I'm lined up on my threat, I extend the arm out, and then generally we cross thumbs, okay? A lot of people forget about this. We bring the gun up, we start to shoot from here. This is a really good wheel gun grip. I still typically will shoot in a, in a more of a Jerry Barnhart fashion. So for those that don't know, Jerry Barnhart, the burner, been around for many, many years, tremendous competition shooter. He usually runs a thumb down technique with the next technique that I'm gonna show you, and that is this position here. So for me, this is my revolver position, but traditional weaver, as we go back to it, is two cross thumbs as we present to the target. So. This works really good, okay, for the revolver because the cylinder, if we end up having a thumb forward position, what's gonna happen is as we start to fire, we're gonna create drag with our thumbs right here and that's gonna slow the speed of the cylinder, which is then going to affect your trigger pull because as you create more friction on the actual cylinder, that's gonna start to slow down or make your trigger pull feel a lot heavier. So. Again, really good technique, especially in use with the revolver, okay? Now, when we look at the semi-auto, we could do the exact same technique. So I can come out. I'll make this a little bit easier for you guys to see. I could still come out in a traditional weaver stance. Two cross thumbs in this position right here putting pressure towards the grip, bring the gun up, 60% driving forward, 40% driving back, good bent elbow, and start shooting and engaging from here. Some of the drawbacks to this particular grip is not accuracy. <clears throat> it's gonna be speed and trying to control accuracy, depending upon how many rounds are you actually firing. If I was only firing a few rounds, you're probably not gonna be affected. So as we start going up in caliber, we start running nine millimeter plus P, 40 cal plus P, a lot of bark there, 357 SIG, 45 plus P. The gun generally is gonna start to walk to the path of least resistance. And where you generally find that cross thumb technique is from the weaver stance. The two really work hand in hand very, very well together, I believe. Nothing wrong with the accuracy in that stance and, and dependent upon how many rounds you're trying to fire, again, nothing wrong with some controllability. But if you're trying to shoot extremely quickly and you're trying to maintain both speed and accuracy, typically the gun is going to start to walk to the path of least resistance, which means that you have to mitigate and fix where that gun's going to. So when we look at running a bent elbow, typically the gun wants to go into that direction. And what I mean by that is I cross my thumbs here, I present forward, I start to fire. What generally happens is the gun goes slightly to the path of least resistance. The bend in the elbow contributes to that. And of course, depending upon what grip might be slightly broken on the gun is also gonna to contribute to that as well. Now, remember what we're talking about. We're not talking a few rounds here. We're talking once I'm really getting on that gun and trying to keep this thing as flat as possible and being able to maintain some type of accuracy under speed here, depending upon what sight package I'm presented. So for the isosceles, we're presenting in a forward position right here. Some guys traditionally would run their thumbs in an up position right here as they fired. Same thing from the side. This is what it would look like from this position right here. The goal though is don't break the grip, okay? So we wanna make sure that we have good contact and we're taking up all this surface area right in here. Now for me, I run more of a thumbs forward position. So that means that when I present, I present like this and my wrist, I want it to be at about a 45 because I want bone support. And the slight difference between running thumb up, generally the gun, via the wrist, once it fires, goes to the path of least resistance. Not in this time because of the elbow, but because of the wrist placement right here. So a very subtle 
driving the thumb in a forward position and or like you'll see Jerry Barnhart, like I mentioned earlier, in a thumb down position right here, typically it'll take that hand and it'll put it to where you now have bone support. So as the gun goes off, all that's happening now from this position right here is the gun's wanting to come straight back on you. And this I look at as one of the first positions that we attack on the gun is with the wrist. Now, what do I do with the dominant hand? What I look at is a slight compression from the knuckle right here, the pinky finger, to the back of the palm of the hand. I wanna be as centered up as best as possible. Couple different things. Maybe the gun you buy, based on your hand size, isn't the right one. Because what could happen is you could find yourself with, with a little bit smaller hands to where you have to rotate just to get your trigger finger in the right position. And then what that does is it puts all the pressure on the back of the knuckle. Some guys will refer to this as more of an H grip. And remember, some people get assigned weapons. They don't get to choose and pick their own. So we have to kind of mitigate grip based on what are you assigned and what do you have to shoot. So a lot of times when I see guys or gals running a Glock 21 or the 10 millimeter side of the house on that as well, we're talking about big framed weapons and a lot of people's hands can't line up like this. And if they do, what ends up happening is they don't get a good center position on the trigger with their index finger. So they have to rotate it. And then what happens is all that recoil goes right to the knuckle and then of course, they're a little bit slower on trying to shoot faster and trying to maintain destroying that knuckle over a period of time where it just starts to cause a lot of pain and fatigue. When, of course, if we get the right gun or, or if we're able to do grip reductions like Ben over at Boresight, like Doug over at ATEI, uh, like Salient and uh, uh, Logan Fowler and um, Agency as well, some of those companies will do grip reductions that allow your hand to be able to get into a better position. So again, some different things to think about. Now for me, what I like is I wanna be able to run thumbs forward I want a good presentation right here. I want good bone support. That's the first position that I look at. So we talked about how this is the first contact point. We talked about a little bit of compression between this pinky finger and the back of the gun, okay, as I present. Now I don't want to death grip it, okay, and I don't want to lock this wrist out because if I lock this wrist out, it slows down the speed of the trigger and we'll talk about that later when we start talking about weapon hand or strong hand shooting. Uh, in reaction hand shooting or support shooting. So what we're looking at is good pressure here, just firm pressure, but not enough to start causing any type of redness on the grip. I wanna make sure that as I marry those hands together, the fingers right in here, I wanna make sure that you can't see any of the grip. And then of course I present out and I start. The next hinge that I look at a failure is the elbows, okay? If I present good with the reaction hand in regards to wrist and I present out straight and I drop the elbows here, dependent upon, again, what are you running? And I'm not talking about range rounds and I'm not talking about just making power factor. I'm talking about 40 cal law enforcement rounds shooting plus P. And there's a, it's, it's uh, no offense, it's kind of like an angry Hispanic woman. You just don't want any part of it. So point being is what I'm looking at is how do I control and manage that? In a bend in the elbows, typically the gun comes straight back, not as exaggerated as I'm doing right now, but it's gonna come up off target. And my goal is to try to keep the sights on target for as long as possible. So recoil management is extremely important. So the elbows I think are extremely key to this in regards to once I present out, there's a big difference between this and this right here. Now, some people are double jointed. So we don't want you to hyper extend right here and lock out. And I don't want you to be beyond that point if you're double jointed. I want you to find where with the positions of my arm, can they be a good shock absorber? So for me, it's this position right here. Now, those are just two things. The last thing I'm gonna say not everybody has to do, but for me, it's one of those things that I like shooting 10 millimeter. In the mountains of Wyoming, I typically like to carry 10 millimeter because most game move fast. We're talking wolves, coyotes, and cats. We have mountain lions up there. And I know that with the 10 millimeter round, especially with something moving, that gives me a better advantage. However, when you're shooting 10 millimeter, the spring tension is a, is a lot harder. And what happens is if you're not rigid behind that gun, the slide will only go back so far and generally not chamber and or cause a malfunction. So you have to be much more rigid behind that particular caliber. So for me, my choice is no matter what gun I shoot, I have a slight roll in the shoulder cups right here. So there's a very subtle difference between being neutral 
where they're in a lower position and then driving out a little bit more, so neutral to right here. Now, if you find yourself starting to turtle, that's a little bit too much. That's gonna start affecting your speed, it affects tension in your neck. There's a wide variety of things that I wouldn't advocate you going to that hardcore of a route. So you're trying to find the subtleties. Remember, this is what I need to do in order to present right here. I have a slight roll of the shoulders in a forward position. You may not even need to do that because of the size, because of your being, just your overall upper torso, you may find that you don't need to do that whatsoever.